Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about embroidery and the way in which your embroidery machine reads the colors from designs um, that you guys are going to either import from um, online or something that you have gotten in the past, whether it's on a CD and you put it on a USB stick. It doesn't matter how the design gets into your machine. I think what's important to understand is the way in which your machine reads those. And I'm not going to get into the um, kind of the formatting of that when it comes to um, the technical side of it. Um, that's not really my forte anyway. What I think is important to understand is that when you have an embroidery design, the digitizers design it in such a way that you're able to, your machine will read colors based on the way that they digitized. When they digitize, they use specific colors. Now, a commercial machine is different. It does not, it does it, does it completely differently. But when you have a home machine, which is really what we're, we're talking about here, your machine will read those colors the best way it can. If, it, if the design has been digitized, in such a way that it, your machine doesn't read those specific colors. If it doesn't have in its set of, four, of, of uh, basically it's kind of coding. So you've got colors that are in your machine and that your machine can read. And then you've got the digitizers colors that they have programmed into that design. If your machine doesn't speak the same language as that digitizer, it will come up with the closest color that it can. In its, in its mind so that when your, when your design comes up, it's got a list of colors. If those colors don't exactly match what the digitizer digitized them to be, your machine will pick the closest thing to it. it if it, if it um, doesn't have something close to it, it could come up with something entirely different. So a lot of people get hung up on um, basically trying to input into their machine, like if you use Floriani or if you use Isocord, your machine can actually be programmed to read those colors. I personally don't pay a lot of, or basically I don't pay any attention to what my machine designates as those specific colors. Again, it will read it the way the machine, your, your embroidery machine wants to read it. So what's important is that when you've got a color chart, you need to follow that if you want your design to be stitched out the way in which the digitizer or the, the, the designer meant that design to appear. I personally love to change my colors up. So I will go through in the edit function and I'll change colors based on what I want it to look like. But if it's a design, for example, um, OESD, and I've shown you guys a couple of different tile scenes that I've made. Their digitizers are superior in the choices that they make with isocord thread. If you want your, your tile scenes, they have unbelievable Christmas tile scenes. If you want it to look identical to the way that those digitizers created that and the designers created it, you need to follow that precisely. And, and then they make it very simple. You've got a color chart to follow. Um, so another, another wonderful designer is Zandra Shaw. She does her designs specifically for, with certain colors. So if you're doing, for example, a poppy patch, you've got her color chart and you wanna follow that exactly. And that's, it makes it so much more simple because the majority of your embroidery is done in the preparation of its creation. So if you do those things and you follow things like stabilizer and, um, and again, color chart and using the correct needle for the correct project, those, those things, once they're done in preparation prior to stitching it out, you will love the outcome. And it's going to be, it's going to take you from being a beginner to being an, ex, an expert and it'll come, it'll, you'll end up with superior results um, by taking those early steps in preparation for that. I don't mess a lot with my stabilizer. There's a lot of um, mystery, I think, surrounding, should I use 
uh, cut away? Should I use tear away? Should blah, blah, blah. There's so much in there. Again, if I am stitching something out with OESD and it's a, an extremely dense design, which is the way those tile scenes are made, I follow it exactly the way that they say, which is in that case, it's a fusible webbing and then two layers of heavyweight cutaway and it comes out beautifully, no puckering, nothing. So you, you learn that through experience. Um, I don't use tearaway stabilizer. It's, for the most part, it's, it's useless. Um, cutaway is really the way to go when it comes to a more dense design. I always, always, and this is just me, you may never hear this from anyone else and, they, and there are plenty of people that would argue this, but it works for me. I always fuse either no-show mesh, I actually I don't fuse, let me correct that. No-show mesh, I do not fuse to the back of it. But when it comes to um, fusible webbing that I get from OESD, I always fuse that by heat. The, that the, When I say fuse, I mean use your iron and, and, um, and iron it to the back of your fabric. I have never had a problem with puckering since I started doing that, so I stick to it and I've really, really been happy with it. Another brand um, is Pellon 101. That's another fusible webbing and it works beautifully. Um, and it's actually cheaper. You can get Pellon 101 through, um, well, I order it in bulk, but you can also get it at Joann's and you can get it at Walmart, I think. I think they carry that as well. Um, but I, I suggest getting these kinds of things that you're gonna use all the time in bulk online. I mean, who, who doesn't love Amazon for that? Um, and then secondly, as far as our embroidery goes, once you realize that your machine is gonna do what it's gonna do, you have to override that and think for it when it comes to colors and use the color charts that you're given. It really does help. Another thing that I wanted to share is journaling about your embroidery designs. And um, what, again, when you talk about preparation, if you stitch something out, and you're happy with the way that you've done that. Um, I highly recommend, and this is just another example of preparation, is getting a, a binder or a, you know, this, I, I, I ordered this recently, um, and it's just a journal basically. I also ordered these little sticky notes, and basically what they do, I've never seen these before, but I found them on Amazon. They, um, you can peel them off, and I'll do this so that you guys can see it. You, they're sticky notes, but what you can do is you can attach it in your binder like this, and it instead of not having tabs, you can actually attach it in, in that little binder like that, and you've got a tab. So when, um, when I'm journaling about what it is that I'm making, I can write on this little tab um, whatever that design is, and I can put as many as I want in there, and that way I've got it written down. Um, I read an article recently that talked about journaling in um, on your computer and doing that as far as you know writing it down as far as computers go because then you can go in there and you can just say hey I want my um, OESD Santa design boom that comes up and you can uh, update that as as needed for those of us who prefer pen and paper and I know this is an age thing most likely I I, I'm just a pen and paper girl. I love to write things down and they don't change and I don't lose them and I have so many problems with computers to begin with and for those of you that have watched me, you know that Technic, uh, technical stuff frankly isn't my thing and I'm okay with that and I'm, I'm going to continue to get better as long as it assists me with my embroidery. Otherwise, I don't care about computers at all. I just want them to work for me for embroidery. Here's another um, journal that I bought the other day. And this, obviously this has little tabs and I found these on Amazon. And this is, um, I don't know how you say this, but it's the, clearly I can pronounce the blossom part, but it's blossom by P-U-K-K-A. -K -K and I'm gonna just say that's either pukka or puka. I have absolutely no idea. So you can pronounce it in any way that makes you happy. I, frankly, I call it puka because that makes me laugh. So that's what I call it. But this is another excellent way to, um, to organize your designs. And you can do, um, you know, you can say, 
Christmas designs and then just kind of thumb through it and then use these to say OESD or whatever it is um, to organize it that way. But I think being organized with your designs and keeping them in a way that works for you. Everybody has their different systems that works for them. I demonstrated this not too long ago. Um, this is another organizational tool when it comes to embroidery. Um, and this is something I didn't start off doing 10 years ago, but it's really helped me since. I take all of my designs and put them in files on my computer and then put them on USB sticks. And then I take those USB sticks and put all of my designs on an external hard drive because, um, and a lot of people you put them on CDs, DVDs. There's, I've seen different arguments about whether or not those fail also. There's really only so much you can do. But if you have your designs on USB sticks and you've got them on external hard drives and they're sitting there on your computer cloudy thing that's, I don't know where that is, but apparently that's fail safe. I don't think it is because I don't have it in my hand. And I trust things that I have a hold of. USB sticks are one of them and then the ex external hard drive. Something's going to be stable. Something will maintain those designs for you. And we take so much time collecting these beautiful designs that our favorite designers create for us that you don't want to lose them. Uh, they're just, they're, they're, and they're things that you may not think you'll stitch out again, but something comes up with someone you love and, you know, if you have a grandchild and now all of a sudden you've got a ballerina in the family and you can pull that design up and stitch her something pretty or you've got a, um, a grandson that does karate you can you can stack that or store that in your little um, in your USBs under boy stuff or however your mind works and then again like I said when you do find that magic mix of stabilizer and needle and um, which color threads you use because when you choose those if you don't if you choose not to follow the chart you can write down exactly what it is, um, King Star M83, and you've got the exact same color. And you just go to your, your wall of thread and pull off your colors and, and run them. And it just makes that a lot more fun because really this, this embroidery thing that we do and quilting is the joy in our life. And why not take the and why not streamline it and make it as easy for you as you can you can make it in the preparation of it all it just it just helps later on and it and it and and really all of us that are obsessed with this love the part where you get to even though even though I've done this a billion times there's still that moment of oh when I press the little green button and say okay Solaris work magic and I push the button and then it starts working and watching it stitch out I never have lost the joy for that it is just I love it. I, I absolutely love to watch those creations come out and have them in my hands and they're tangible. And um, while I'm not sitting there stitching over and over like the gals used to do, which is terribly impressive, I still have that feeling of completion and, the, and that satisfaction of having created something with my hands and my machine that I love. And I get to give those, for the most part, I really don't keep much that I do. I, I, I put things on my walls I think that I, I love and I want to see, but the part of the other part, the part of the other joy of it is giving those things away to people and watching them receive those things and I don't know anyone that doesn't love to get something that was made for them. It's, it's something that you, you never get rid of and it's emotional. It's emotional to give it away and it's emotional to receive it and that's really what we're, what we're all about. I think um, satisfying and 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 giving, giving, and being grateful and showing that gratitude. And I think giving to someone is, without saying it, it's just a form of gratitude and a form of love. And I think that's really what makes us happy. In a, in the deep places of us, we can get a, a brand new shiny car, and that's great. And in a month, it's dirty and and it still drives. Now, I'm not talking about you, car guys. Don't. Don't go there. I get it. One of my sons has, has, since he was one, he's had a car in each, little cars in each hand, and he's still, now he's got his beautiful cars, and he loves them. That's his form of our fabric and, and our embroidery designs, and I fully get that. But you guys know what I'm saying. Um, the gratitude and love that comes from 
making and giving is just irreplaceable. So that's the lesson for today, I think, uh, with organizing and writing down and preparation that goes into embroidery and then being able to reap the reward of your creation. So thank you for watching. I really do, I do very much appreciate you taking the time. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I will keep making videos that help you and um, help spark your creativity. I'm working on several things right now that I will show, but they're not ready yet. And I want them to be perfect before I do. So I will show them to you when they're completed. I'm gonna work some more on one of them right now. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and fill your life with beauty and joy and it will rub off on other people. Thank you. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.